Hello YouTubers, and today I'm going to review Golden Sun Dark Dawn for the Nintendo DS. This game occurs 30 years after Golden Sun The Lost Age. And this time, it has the heroes from the original game, this is their children. That's Isaac's kid, I don't know, I don't remember her name. And yeah, pretty much, I don't reveal anything. Not sure. He's just along for the ride. Okay. So, as you can see from all Golden Sun games, this is an RPG. You use the D-pad to move, or you can use the stylus to move wherever you want to go. The X button activates your menu. We'll talk about that later. The Y button activates the map here. And the top screen here shows your health. And the dungeon you can use to summon. I'll talk about all this later. For now, let's get into a battle. Okay, we're in a battle here. So you have a couple options here. You can either fight, you can check the status of your uh, members in your party. Matthew, Karis, and Tyrell. Other character. Um, you can flee, which I'm not going to do. You can... Well, I want to fight. Defend means you won't attack. For now, we're going to have Matthew attack. Now later on you can get Synergy, which is pretty much like Psychic Energy, but it's like pretty much like magic. And there's different types you can use here. They all use uh, Psy Power. Let's use that one of them. And now we're going to use a Dinjin. These are pretty much like uh, sprites, or fairies you could say, except they're feature looking things. Okay, this one says Fever, you know, damage and dilute foe the heat haze. So I'm just going to have it attack that one. And for the last one, yes, we're going to use Summon for Reef. Now, you can summon, you can summon different uh, gods, but only if you have enough Dinjin on, in stock on standby. After you use a Dinjin for battle, it will become on standby. For instance, here, you need a Earth Dinjin, and a fire dungeon on standby to use this. Uh, I can't use that one either. Actually, I can't use any of them. See, there's not enough dungeon on standby. Well, let's make that happen. Oh well. Okay, anyway. Let's get to another battle, and we will talk about the summon. We have a mole and a fairy, but I'm going to use my Dinjin. Flower restores HP. That's more Dinjin on in stock. Oh, by the way, the top screen in the battle shows uh, the level, the uh, Dinjin power they have, I think. Either way. Jolt will revive a downed ally, so I can't really use that one. But let's see what we have on in uh, stock. Or let's not just just have her attack the wall. Now see another dungeon's on standby. Now that means that's another one I can attribute. I can attribute to use a summon with. But I'm pretty much covering stuff from Golden Sun 1. <laughs> but there's some people that have not played the other Golden Sun game. I just learned a new move. Sweet. Okay. You see here, there's tons of dungeon I can use, but first we're gonna go to the menu. Settings here, I'm going to show you. Change your speed. You can change that. 
hear that. I have it on, just for nostalgia purposes. Okay. The travel log here is a save slot, pretty much. So I'm gonna save that, because I just leveled up. The synergy... You can... The synergy menu shows this character. Psy energy they have. Now, move is good for moving objects, and growth later on, actually shortly you will see plants, you can use growth on, they will grow, you can climb. Retreat means you can, if you're in a dungeon, you can run away. Rip, that will be very useful later. Kind of like a hook shot, Legend of Zelda. Pretty self-explanatory there. Whirlwind, you can kind of help solve your puzzles too. Fireball, that's probably the most helpful Psy you have the entire game for now. Anyway, here are the dungeons I have. Flint, Flower, Jolt. And you can have them set. You can set them. Or you can put them on standby. Which means that they're used. They can be used for a summon. Now, this is another part where Golden Sun Dark Dawn shines. Now, each person has a uh, dungeon allocated to them, but you can switch dungeon around to change their attributes. But well, that one won't change. Let me see. Let me try to this one here. Yeah. Well, that's a bummer. Come on. Let's try one over here. It says nothing will change. Let me, come on, let me try something else. Either way, if you do it right, you can pretty much show that there is changes. Aha, right here, perfect. See? If I give, if I give a uh, jolt to Tyrell, she will lose statistics, but he will gain some. As you can see here, I will gain in some attacks here, but I will lose in heat wave and a flare. But I don't want to do that. So they're good. They're good for now. The items. Uh, I kind of have a complaint about this part. The menu is very cramped because each each character has their own item. You can't like go through an all item menu and show all the items. So these are all the items I have. Matthew has. You want to equip the weapon? You just. Well, he is already equipped it. But to give an item to someone, you just tap give, and then give it to them. But I already have that sword equipped. In. I don't think Matthew wants to give that up. <laughs> okay. Um, pretty self-explanatory. You can give items to other characters. Like, I'm going to give this axe to Matthew, just because I can. I don't want to equip the axe, though. Or do I? Let's see the sword I have. Yeah, I want the axe. Give me back my sword. Okay. Status is pretty much... Status here shows their level, their HP, their side power. And you can tap each character here and show their details. This is the moves they have. Moves. It shows the dungeon they're equipped with. Yes, Flint is from Golden Sun 1. You can scroll through the other characters. Encyclopedia. Now, this is quite handy because it pretty much tells you about the world of Golden Sun. Now, the only way to get Entries in the cy encyclopedia is when people are talking, certain items that you can add to the encyclopedia will show up in red. When it's in red, you can tap it and it will add it to the encyclopedia. This is kind of a uh, way of making sure you read the story instead of pushing the A button and skipping it. Because if you do, you might miss a critical uh, encyclopedia entry. Let's see here. Look, Golden Sun G. Where is G? For instance, 30 years ago, this game has occurred 30 years after Golden Sun 2, The Lost Age, if I've said that already. The Dungeon Guide here pretty 
pretty much talks about each digit. There's Venus, there's water, there's fire, and I'm not sure what type Jupiter is. But, let me see. Pretty much, t it's an encyclopedia for digit. Maybe I should add these in here. Either way. The Atlas pretty much is showing places on the map. Where you're at right now. Look on cabin, the plateau, it shows the map area. Quite handy. Let's keep moving on the game. And I'm going to move, and I'm actually going to talk about a complaint about this game. But first, let's go all out. Let's use a summon. I have two uh, Mercury and two Venus, or two green and two yellow. So let's see. There's two yellow here. So let's summon Ramses on all of them. You know what? We'll just have them all defend. Dead. The epic screen videos makes this game awesome too. Damn, that hurt. That fist was all the way from Egypt. <laughs> Ow. Let's go with some Psy energy. How about Earthquake? And maybe... Plasma? Nah, I want something to hit all of them. This is probably going a little much. I have... Two. I can always use this one too as well. If they live long enough. <laughs> I think not. Okay, here's a town here. I'm getting actually into the storyline here. Okay, later on you'll go into towns here. Here's the movement system. Same thing, except the camera's closer. Wyo activates the map here. This is a weapon shop. This is item. This is the armor shop. Uh, item shop. In. I don't know what that is. I should go to it. Either way... Things you can buy here. You can sell items. You can also buy artifacts, which are pretty much like really expensive items, but they're really good. It shows you the top screen, how it will make them better, or how it will make them worse. I'm going through all the items here. Okay. Not gonna buy anything. Sorry. I'm gonna save my money. Okay, let's get out of here. For now, I'm stuck game right now. Well, I'm stuck because I have to go through that town area. But I have a complaint about this game somewhat is uh, how the quest for these heroes is established. The quest is actually established by finding a feather. Yes, a feather. And this goes into all sorts of, uh, they meet people and quests and things like that. And this whole entire quest is started by a feather. They had to find a feather because Tyrell, the kid with the red hair, broke the Sorrow Wing. And the Sorrow Wing is needed to get to the Soul Sanctum. Pretty much like a glider. The Soul Sanctum separate, so you can't walk to it. You have to fly to it. And they have to get to the Soul Sanctum because there is Cyborg Texas showing up around the continent. And it's sucking energy out of Adepts and the land. And this is not good, so Isaac 
has to go to the Soul Sanctum, but it can't because you have to get that feather. I feel this is a little bit of a weak way to start a quest, finding a feather. And another thing I have a complaint about is, is it too hard for the main character to have a little bit of story and, and voice? Why do they have it where barely any characters in any RPG talk? Shut up, you. Um, that's my another complaint about it. And my last complaint is, the story gets a little bit too chatty for me. There's times where I just want to keep skipping and they just, they just talk about the most boringest things. Like Tyro going to a store and something happened where he messed up the guy's store and he wants him out of there. Again, it's not interesting, but we have to go through it because you don't want to miss an encyclopedia entry. And the only thing um, your character has, you're armed with four emotions. Happy, glad, uh, sad, and angry. This is the only way Matthew talks. Yes, he is a child of short words. But anyway, this is a really great game. I highly recommend it. Highly, highly, highly recommend it for any Golden Sun fan. And I do say that it was worth the wait of uh, about... I don't want to act like an idiot, so go to Wikipedia and find out how long it was since the Lost Age in this game. The sound effects are nostalgic. The graphics are quite good. I'm very picky with the MMO. I'm picky with RPGs if they actually don't... Awesome. If they actually don't go up and hit the enemy, I don't like it. That's why Dragon Quest IX I really liked. Oh, during battle you can hold the A button, and it will speed up battle, speed up battles. So, my final verdict about this game is it's a really great RPG. Um, the graphics are nice, the story is about 30 hours long, it'll keep you busy for a long time, but... Some people say the dungeon system is a bit annoying. There's over 70 dungeon for you to equip with and use, which is very, very cool. But, but that's a part of Golden Sun is a unique dungeon system. But with a week, I heard the ending is also they played it safe, which means that it didn't wasn't really an epic ending by any means. And the way the quest in the storyline has started is very, very weak. You start a quest by looking for a feather. That is a bit lame to me. The chatty, the chatty dialogue and the uninteresting conversations that a player must have to go through also kind of degrades from the do what factor of this game. But besides those three factors or four, I don't remember how many I just said, this game is, I, I, like I said before, I recommend it to anyone who's a Golden Sun fan or an RPG fan, especially Golden Sun fans. Oh, by the way, you can also, what are these LNR buttons here for? Let me change the focus here first. The one thing I forgot to talk about. You can set you can set shortcuts. Like let me set the fireball. That was stupid. The fireball. You can set it with L and R. They're both fireball. So now I tap the R trigger. It'll activate fireball. Most of the time using Psy Energy in the game, and when you're not in battle, is used to solve puzzles. Which is another thing I somewhat have a complaint about. I felt like Golden Sun for the Game Boy Advance challenged me more with the puzzles. And this game feels like the puzzles were a little bit rushed and they're, they're, they're quite easy for a simpleton to solve. But it's still a great game nonetheless. If you are really picky with RPGs though and you really don't like boring storylines and uninteresting dialogue which a lot of RPGs have then you might want to go for Dragon Quest 9 but if you're a Golden Sun fan you like RPGs especially Golden Sun then I recommend picking this game up well this has been Stanley Opar 91 and thanks for watching my review of Golden Sun Dark Dawn. If you like this review, please subscribe. If you want to make a point, please like this video. The more likes I get, the more easier it is for YouTubers to find this clip. And if you want to make a comment, feel like I didn't review enough, or 
you have you want me to review a special game, just comment and I will respond. I am very I'm very punctual with responding to comments. I'm not like some YouTubers where I leave comments and never respond back. Okay. Like I said, thanks for watching my review, and see you next time.